back in the day, the fear was if people heard records on the radio, they would not go out and buy the record. If they heard an orchestra on the radio, they would not go out to hear live music. And that, of course, was the opposite effect. The more people heard a record on the radio, the more the record sold. And Absolutely. again, box office increased when an orchestra, the Frank Sinatra's, the Tony Bennett's, the Lena Horns were on the radio. It's kind of hard for our generation uh, and ensuing generations to imagine when radio was not just new sports talk and music. And that it was really having a theatrical bent to it. What was the percentage of radio stations that did these classic radio shows? Well, and during its heyday, pretty much all of them did. Yeah. Uh, okay. What you would have is you would have the mornings would be uh, you, you had some news shows, you had some music shows, but the daytime program, well, most of what I play on radio classics at Sirius XM are all primetime shows. Okay. So a lot of the daytime shows are either lost to time or they're kind of hard to play with what we do. They yeah. were soap operas. They were game shows. You know, the original quiz shows, uh, things like To Tell the Truth, uh, uh, more more a better example, um, Truth or Consequences, Radio right. First, shows like Information, Please. A lot of the, the shows, because what literally happened in the 1950s is suddenly television came along and they had to fill time. Yes. And they had to figure out how are we going to fill this time? And so the, they looked at the radio shows and said, oh, wait a minute. Dragnet would work well on television. Let's try it on TV. Right. Gunsmoke. Right. Hey, what if we had what if we actually had a visual gun smoke? Because all these people have been listening to it, not watching it. Uh, and the same thing happened with with the game shows and the soap operas. Sure. Uh, the Guiding Light soap opera that's been around was around for a million years it was radio first. So at the time, you would normally have a normal programming during the daytime. You would have. Uh, and this is an outdated uh, con con uh, comment, uh, fortunately, but you had programming for the the housewives. Yes. So you had the soap operas, you had the game shows, sure. you had the music shows that allowed them to listen while they were doing their housework. Right. Then in the afternoons and early evenings, the kids were home. So now you're playing the Lone Ranger. So now you're putting on these these uh, Hop Harrigan and Captain Midnight and Little Orphan Annie. These, right. these serialized programs that the kids tuned into every day. Right. One thing that a lot of people lose, I play Superman every week on the channel. I play it every Wednesday. Uh, I also host When Radio Was, which is an AM FM show that's on about 200 affiliates. But not, uh, not to interrupt you, Greg. The oh, interesting go right ahead. Thing you just did. About <laughs> Superman right. is the lead actor. Greg, you want to tell them about it? The lead actor of Radio Superman? Yeah. It was Bud Collier. Who is... Well, Bud well, Collier, was, he was the original host of Beat the Clock and To Tell the Truth. Okay. And then even into the 1960s, uh, uh, it went, like when I was a little kid, you would see the Superman animated shows, like the right. Superman, Aquaman, and Our Adventure. You know, you probably right. remember those. Uh, and the great thing was for a while, uh, he actually died, died a little young in, in like the late 60s, but he was voiced, they brought him back to do Superman for the animated shows too, which was really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, then, but then, yeah, so the kids, the kids would listen into the, in the early evening. And then when you get into the nighttime, you had the primetime shows. Now, what we've all lost sight of with, and we've lost this with television too, is you were live. You had one chance to hear it. Right. There weren't replays. They weren't recording and playing it back. And so you had to pick who am I listening to? You know, am I going to listen to Jack Benny or, oh, we're, here's, you know, here's Charlie McCarthy over here. Or, you know, you would try to, you would actually, you know, and of course, then ratings, they had ratings just like they do today with stuff. Uh, and um, the prime times were dominated uh, mostly by uh, the big stuff that I play. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing with television. Right. I mean, it would. Absolutely. You know, there, there was there would be in, the, in the time before VCRs. But it's amazing how radio, when you listen to something on radio and see it, it's two different interpretations. Uh, one of uh, my parents used to tell me when they heard the Nixon Kennedy debate that Nixon won the debate. Mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> you, know, and you didn't see nixon sweating on radio exactly, exactly. and exactly. That, uh, my my uh, african-american in-laws were the martin luther king uh i have a dream speech was much more impactful on radio which is how they heard it i don't even think it was broadcast live on television but tom you could almost make a case yeah. for that because you have to concentrate yeah. you don't have the exactly. visual stimulation and that's i think one of the most important things about radio uh shows uh as i'm driving into new york or wherever 
I've got Richard Diamond on. I'm 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 visualizing all this wonderful stuff going on. And and for me, the crime dramas are are my favorites. <laughs> uh, but what what's really funny, Greg? I got I got to tell you, for all these years of listening to you. And now to see you, it, it 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 tickles me, you know. Oh, there's the face to that uh, voice. It, it, Is it one of those you're like you didn't look anything like I thought you would? Exactly. I, well, this, see, this is the thing I had with Howard Stern. I always thought Howard Stern looked like Danny DeVito until I actually saw him. <laughs> He's two Danny DeVito. One Danny DeVito <laughs> stacked on the other. Right on th or, or three of them. Arthur um, uh, uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger, right? His twin. Right, right. Well, it's <laughs> interesting how Sirius XM kind of makes up. It's kind of almost an amalgamation of radio, and I'm talking about all the stations because you know you have the country station, which echoes the Grand Ole Opry. What an influential show that was! Then you have some of the rock stations, which are really very derivative of uh, the BBC Pirate Radio. You go back to like John Peel and Kenny Everett and, and those type of DJs, and of course you still have the Top Forty stuff, which is echoes of Wolfman Jack, Cousin Brucey, right? We grew up on those guys, and the Moon Dog, Alan Freed. Right. So it's again, it, it radio, the more people say it, it, it changes. It's really it's really still the same. And, and, it, and it never died. It never went away. Here's one of my favorite memories of of the early days of satellite radio. Mm -hmm. now, I came in at the very beginning right. of the XM radio. So XM and Sirius were two separate radio companies. Right. Most people know this now, but it's been 15 years since the merger. Uh, Sirius was based in New York City. XM was based in Washington, D.C., Going into the Washington, D.C. thing in 2001 and getting when we got like a, a half a dozen listeners and they're all General Motors executives. I mean, you're just trying to get this thing on the air. Right. XM went on a few months ahead of Sirius. And we they instead of putting us in like this big, beautiful building used to be the National Geographic's printing building in, in, in D.C. They gutted it. They remodeled. It's a gorgeous building, all brick. And they didn't say, okay, we're going to put all the talk people over here, all the music people, et cetera. We had these big open rooms, like an old newsroom, like you'd see in, in right. all the president's men or something like that. And they mixed and matched us on purpose because they wanted that to, they wanted that, that jazz feel mm -hmm. maybe influence the country guys, you know, and, yeah. and the same thing with, and so when I set my, one of my next door desk mates at the very beginning was Junior Marvin, who was Bob Marley's guitar player. And Junior was working on the reggae channel. And uh, there was one little cluster of people that I loved because it was the guy who ran the Broadway hit tunes channel, yeah, right next guy. to the liquid metal guy. And they sat next to Eddie Kilroy, who was the classic Willie's Place, Willie's Roadhouse. Oh, yeah, as it place, should be. As it country should be. guy. Uh, guy that ran the... Uh, um, was the other one there was one guy was running like um dance music sure and and then like the alternative guy alternative rock guy they were all in the exact same little cluster excellent and you found yourself interacting with these people all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.